a world's first combination of two orthopedic procedures in Singapore, has saved a severely infected diabetic foot from major amputation, and it may just offer a new solution for future diabetic foot care. Currently, almost nine in ten individuals with a lower limb amputation in Singapore had diabetes. Now, doctors from the Ng Teng Fong General Hospital first performed a procedure called transverse tibia transport, creating a small bone window to increase blood flow to the affected limb and prevent further tissue death. This was followed by a double-barrel free fibula flap surgery, which reconstructed the missing bones in the middle of the foot, using a part of the patient's calf bone. This recreates the foot arches necessary for walking. And here to share more, our adjunct associate professor, Chen Yongsheng, consultant on orthopedic trauma surgery from Ng Teng Fong General Hospital in Lao Mingjie, a patient that has benefited from the procedure. Welcome to the program. Hi. So, Professor Chen, this new TTT surgery, uh, is it going to replace existing ways of how we treat uh, infected gangrene limbs and help to uh, prevent amputation? Well, um, I, I certainly hope that um, not to give the message that TTT will be the magic bullet um, to, um, to, to solve all diabetic foot problems. The way I see it is that it co rather complements the existing treatment methods that we already have. Mm -hmm. And that um, leads to um, things like uh, good medical therapy, good control of diabetes, proper infection control with, uh, with uh, necessary antibiotics, uh, proper surgical debridement and cleaning of the wound. Um, and to that, we have a team of very dedicated uh, um, specialists within Ng Teng Fong General Hospital mm -hmm. um, who, who, who provide a multidisciplinary care for these patients. So TTT was just one part of, um, of, um, of uh, the patient's uh, overall treatment. I think more importantly, our nurses, our vascular surgeons, our podiatrists, our plastic surgeons, all endocrinologists, dietitians, all have a very crucial role to play in the treatment of uh, this. I see that you brought along a, a diagram with you. Maybe you can show us how it works. So um, to, to um, share the, better share with the audience what TTT really is about, basically I, I, um, I, the way I, I, I tell our patients is that this is like tricking the body into thinking that there's a fracture in the, in the leg. Mm -hmm. and, as, and one of the early responses to, um, to a fracture is of, of anybody's uh, um, body is to send um, more blood supply into that leg. And with the improved vascularization, this will help promote uh, tissue healing. So TCT is a rather simple procedure. It's minimally invasive. Uh, what we do is that uh, we make a small bone window, like over here, it's just five centimeters by, by 1.5 centimeters, and then we attach it to an external fixator. This is a mobile external fixator, and by turning the knobs, you move the bone. So when you excite the bone in such a manner, you create controlled movement, and that in turn induces neovascularization or increased blood flow to the rest of the limb. And this helps to bring about uh, better resolution of the patient's diabetes, mm -hmm. uh, diabetic foot infection, uh, necrosis, etc. Okay, and Mr. Lau, let's bring you in here. You, you went through a series of uh, toe and forefoot amputations and you experienced worsening gangrene. Tell us, how do you feel knowing that you had to potentially amputate uh, below your knee if you did not go through uh, this combination of surgeries? Okay, um, firstly, I, I'm glad that I'm, I've gone through this combined surgery. Mm. Okay, if not, I will be living on today without... My, f my left foot with only one foot left. So my life will be totally different. Lifestyle will totally change. It will be affecting my work and everything. Okay, I'm glad that I met Dr. Chen. He gave me medical recommendation on this TTT. Mm -hmm. I took his suggestion and I trusted him and just hand over my leg to him. <laughs> so I'm happy that we both of them are happy that the result is good. Because he did it, and I also did it. Mm. Yeah. It, it saved by my leg. What could you recall from that period of time when you were unwell? I mean, what were some of the challenges that you experienced? Uh, firstly, I stepped on to on the screw. Then I actually having fever, yeah. like one or two hours later. Yeah. So after two to three days, the leg became swollen. So I went back to the GP again. He asked me to go hospital immediately. 
Okay, mm. and you also had to undergo extensive uh, rehabilitation to learn how to walk again yeah. after uh, the combination of surgeries. What was the process like for you and how did your quality of life improve after that? Okay, uh, when I start learning to walk, to stand again, it is very difficult because I've been lying on bed for almost three months plus. My muscles are all weak. Mm -hmm. I can't even stand, stand up. So the healthcare, the care team uh, actually encouraged me a lot to make me do exercise every day, two times a day, to actually train back my stamina and muscle so that when that day of discharge, I'm able to walk out of the hospital my own. Okay, yeah. has there been a change to your lifestyle, your day-to-day -day activities? Uh, slight changes because I still have my right foot. Mm. Yeah, as compared to I lose it, it's a major changes. The slight changes is I have to lighten my work. I can't go job sites anymore. I concentrate more on office, office work. Yeah. Then I, when I'm going out to crowded place, I will think twice because I might scared people step on my foot. Yeah. Sure. Mm. You know, this combination of uh, novel orthopedic procedures yeah. involving the TTT mm. surgery and a double barrel free fibula flap surgery, uh, Professor Chen, walk us through the intricacies of such surgeries. What are the risks and challenges involved here? Okay. Um, first of all, um, we need to make sure that there is a proper rest restoration of the patient's blood flow. And this we observe um, uh, the patient clinically, we, we observe his his, the progress of his wound over time. We need to see that um, the necrosis is reversed. Mm. We need to see his, that his infection is under control. We need to see, for example, that his fever uh, has, uh, has uh, resolved. We need to check his uh, blood test and, and we need to check the status of the wound. And uh, the early results of our TTT uh, procedure on patients like Ming has been very encouraging. Um, we've, had, we've had fairly uh, good results in the patients that we've done this on. And we're certainly hoping to open it up to, to more patients. However, we are also very selective in the patients that we, that we offer this procedure to because we certainly don't want to be doing an additional procedure on a patient that doesn't require this and that would have healed with conventional therapy anyway. Okay. So, um, um, so these, um, so, so I think the, the short answer to your question is that of proper patient selection and, and um, TTT itself is not without its risks, right? Um, this is a controlled fracture. The fracture can propagate. Mm -hmm. um, the pin tracks need to be looked after very carefully. Otherwise, patients who are immunocompromised, like, like, uh, like Mingjie, can easily develop an infection of the pin tracks. Yeah, and that can undo all the good that we, we have been doing for him. Yeah, Mr. Lau, we, we're glad to see you doing better now. But before you go, uh, what advice do you have for people who are probably in the same situation as you? Oh, uh, firstly, the early screening is very important because you do not know when the virus uh, will attack you. You will get infection. And if you are well, you sit for medication medical treatment immediately and do not drag. All right, yeah. Mr. Lau, thank mm. you so much uh, for that great advice. Mm. And Professor Chen, thank you so much for coming in to share your perspectives with us. Thank that was adjunct Associate Professor Chen Yongsheng and patient Lau Mingjie.